Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and it is coming up on that most wonderful time of the year. That time of the year when good little boys and girls are going to be filling out their list to Santa Claus and for many kids and adults this year, that list is going to include, if not consist exclusively of, 3D printer. And so a lot of people are wondering, oh, what's a good one to get, which is probably why we're seeing lists like this one on the New York Times of the best 3D printer to get. Now, you might look at this list and go, what does the New York Times know about 3D printers? I mean, after all, take a look at this. Do, do you see what's happening in this, in this print right here? A good choice of printer, except they've got it sideways, like they don't know which way is forward. And also, what is the deal with this vase mode print that they printed solid? Come on, guys. Do you have any idea how to 3D print? Well, I'm going to go over their list, their suggestions. We're going to see how they, how they rank, in my opinion. And we're going to see if maybe the New York Times doesn't know as much as they think they do. Now, before we look at their list, I'm going to scroll past their suggestions. We're going to zip on down here, and we're going to take a look at their research section because I want to point out that the New York Times are journalists, and they did good research, and they talked about who they were, what experience they have, who this was made for, and how they tested 3D printers, where they got their information, when they got a hold of them, what they did to test them, they were thorough. They did their due diligence and they did a really good job, I think, of putting this together. So I'm going to give them major props to begin with. And let's jump into their list and see what they thought the best 3D printers were. So right at the top here, their pick for a best starter 3D printer for people is the Prusa Mini Plus. And here's the thing. I 100% agree with this choice. Last year, I talked about I talked about common 3D printers that people suggest and suggested some other ones that people might want to look at. And in that video, I talked about Prusa, but I didn't have a Prusa at the time. Well, I do now. In fact, I have two. I have the MK3S and I have the Mini Plus. Now, the MK3S was given to me by Prusa Research. They wanted me to, to have this machine, and I haven't made a dedicated video about it, but I will say this. What I said in that previous video, basically that it was a good machine, solid, but you need to have a high level of technical confidence to feel good doing it, I 100% agree with. Now that I have it and have actually used it, I think I hit the nail on the head, and I think that everything I said is still true even though I've used a machine. Nothing's changed about it. But this machine I purchased myself because I, honestly I just thought if this machine does what it promises it will blow away every 3D printer that I've looked at before. And you know what? I'm going to pull up my ultimate 3D printing comparison rubric. I have put in a spreadsheet because who doesn't love spreadsheets? Every 3D printer that I have looked at and reviewed and every single one of them here is ranked by their capability, ease of use, and price. And the price is pretty simple, but it is graded on a curve because we expect more from more expensive printers and, and less expensive printers have less parts to interact with each other. Capability is broken down into various various little segments and ease of use is also broken down and everybody gets a little score on these and we put them all together and use those to give them the final score and look look at what's sitting at the very tip top of this list the highest scoring top rank machine the prusa mini plus semi-assembled kit this machine for the price for the capability for how remarkably easy it is to use. There, there's nothing, it's, it's amazing how good this machine is. It blew away what used to be number one, the King Room KP3S, by a solid three points, uh, two and a half, still, 
blew it away. And that, that's, that's impressive. So I 100% agree with their choice. Now we're going to come back to the King Room KP3S because it is a $170 3D printer. And, and so I, I decided to keep it in the S rank. We have two in the S rank. If you can afford the Prusa Mini, absolutely 100%. Let's go back to the New York Times and look at what else they did. Their number two suggestion was their upgrade print or upgrade pick. Interesting choice of words there. They chose the Prusa i3 MK3S. Now, let me go back to my comparison rubric. The Prusa MK3S pre-assembled is a high A tier 3D printer. It's really, really good. Now, if you take a look at the kit, the kit that you have to assemble yourself and have strong technical confidence to be able to use is, it's also A tier, but it's a much lower A tier printer. The problem, th this to me is the problem with the Prusa MK3S. You need to be confident technically to use this machine. Now I will say that if you start with the mini, upgrading to a 3D printer that uses the same slicer, that is the same, everything that you're used to is a good choice. But as an upgrade 3D printer, if you're like, oh, I've outgrown the mini and I want something that can do more. I mean, we've got the Bamboo Lab X1 now, guys. This machine showed up this year and is blowing people away. And, and quite frankly, it's become my workhorse. Not for the least of which, because unlike the Prusa machines, it has Wi-Fi delivery. So I can sit on my computer, say, start a print, and it springs to life and does the print for me. But it also checks the first layer for me, and it tells me if there's any problems. And it's it's just a really, really good machine. Now, again, this is a new machine. It came out this year, but boy, it hit it out of the park in so many ways. And I will mention that on my rubric list, the MK3S is sitting just below the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon Combo. The Combo is the one that has the multi-material AMS system in the original bundle, but this is way more expensive than the Prusa MK3S, but it's also way more capable because it's a bigger build volume and it can do four materials at a time and it's so much easier to use. So consider that in what you think of as a good machine to upgrade to. I think they're both excellent choices for this category. Go back to their list real fast. The budget pick. Now here is where the New York Times and I disagree a little bit. They chose the Monoprice MP Cadet. Now, I have actually used this 3D printer, and I will say that I don't have this 3D printer anymore, but only because I was willing to gift it to family. When a family member said, hey, I want to get into 3D printing, I pulled down the MP Cadet. Actually, I, it's the we do Tina 2, exact same printer. Monoprice doesn't make 3D printers. They just pick winners and sell them. But if you buy the We do uh, Tina 2, then you'll get it from the original manufacturer. But they're the same machine. Anyways, I pulled this down. I pulled another one down. This is the one that was still running, even though I had neglected it for a while. And so I tried it out. I was like, actually, this isn't too hard to use. Here you go, guys. Have fun. So big props for this machine. But there's a much better one. Let's come back to my list here. Let's take a look. The King Rune KP3S is that S-tier 3D printer. And it's only $170. Let's take a look at this. King Rune KP3S has a build volume of 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters. Uh, Ender 3, which is what everybody thinks of as a starting 3D printer, has a build volume of 200 by 200 by 200. So this is only slightly smaller than that, but it's way bigger than the Cadet or Tina 2 printer that, that they suggested. It's cheaper. It 
okay, the, the Tina 2 doesn't need to be assembled whatsoever, but this only needed to have like the, the Y arm or the Z arm just stuck into it and screwed on and it was ready to go. I was surprised how quick and easy this was to use and it's got a great user interface. So for me, my budget pick is the King Rune KP3S. Now, I will mention that King Rune recently came out with the KP3S Pro, which I have not had a chance to get my hands on. It's a little bit bigger in build volume. It's got a little bit of an upgraded uh, user interface, so it might even be easier to use. And it's just a little bit more than the KP3S. So consider that in your consideration for uh, which 3D printer to look at. I will say that they mention in this article a little bit further down, like, why don't we recommend the Ender 3, which everybody recommends the Ender 3 and everybody loves the Ender 3, but we're not saying anything about the Ender 3. I, I also don't entirely recommend the Ender 3, but for this one case. A lot of people will point out, well, I can get an Ender 3 for $99 when it's on sale at this and that a place. And if that is the only 3d printer that you can afford if you could not possibly pay for the kp3s if that's just outside of your budget but the the ender 3 is in your budget then do get the ender 3 because i would rather you get into 3d printing than not and so if that budget is your only concern then do it because you will do amazing things with an Ender 3. There's lots of people using an Ender 3. You can get help from so many people. Ender 3s are good machines if they are all that you can afford. But if you can afford a little more, you can get a lot better machine for just a little bit more money going elsewhere. So that's my take on the Ender 3. I still think that they're good machines, but I don't recommend them because there are better machines for a little bit more money. Now, what's interesting about this list is they kind of have a, what is this, honorable mention or something here? They like the Artillery Sidewinder X2 because it's a large format 3D printer. And if you want to have a 3D printer that can print things that can fit over like my huge cranium, then you need to have a large format suggestion. And I think that's why they recommended the Artillery Sidewinder X2. Now on my list, I don't have the Artillery Sidewinder X2. The only artillery machine that I've used is the Artillery Genius, which comes in at a high A for me. Artillery makes good machines, really good machines. However, I might recommend the JG Maker Artist D Pro with a big asterisk of if you are technically confident. I have the Artist D Pro. I use the Artist D Pro a lot still because one it is large format and I can print things big enough for my huge cranium number two it's IDEX IDEX means that it has two print heads that move they're, they're tied together on the same rail so they can't like cross over but one of them can get out of the way while the other one comes in and does its job. And then it can get out of the way while the other one comes in and does its job. And they can take turns on one 3D print, on one 3D print doing multiple materials. Not just multiple colors, but completely different materials. If this nozzle has to be kept at one temperature and this nozzle has to be kept at another temperature, no problem. Whereas with other machines that swap out the filament, well, it'll pull out the filament and then go, well, hold on, I got to heat up for this new filament and now put it in and now pull it out. Hold on, I got to cool down for the other filament and now put it in. This one doesn't have that problem. It could just zip, 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 zip. But what's even cooler about this, remember I said it's large format. It can bring both of those heads in at the same time and have them print in tandem, printing a, an exact copy of the same thing on your big build volume you can essentially get two 3d printers for the price of well two 3d printers because it's it's a more expensive machine but you can double your output with this machine so if you're thinking well, i want to have large capabilities but i really want to use it for production runs this machine can work as two 3d printers making double copies of whatever you want or just to be cool it can bring in both the heads 
and then have them, they, they got to move backwards and forwards the same, but they can move opposite each other on the sideways and it can make one a mirror image of the other, which is just silly fun, but really very cool. So for me, my and also pick might be the JG Maker RSD Pro, though I will recommend it comes in at under $500 for this large format IDEX machine. And you might think, wow, that sounds too good to be true. Well, you're going to pay for it with a little bit of sweat equity, getting it set up the first time and getting everything leveled out. I had to make a modification to mine to get it to a point where I was happy with it. And even then, sometimes I'm like, oh, this build plate just doesn't want to level sometimes. So it's got some quirks to it. And if you go in expecting those, then you get a big machine for a lot of capability. The JG Maker Artist D Pro would be my also great suggestions. So there we go. What 3D printer should you buy? Well, I'll tell you what, you get to make that decision yourself, but I hope that I've given you some information to look at. And if you want to take a look at that entire spreadsheet where I've taken a look at every 3D printer I've ever touched, then you can go ahead and look to, at that link will be in the wherever the heck links are found you know where to look for them and until next time i want to thank you very much for watching keep making awesome things and i'll see you next time